Okay, I want to give you an example of a problem like this. This is like 6-2, problem 2. Graded problems. It says the range of t is x, y, z, where x, y, and z must satisfy some equation. Now, I've put the answer here. Uh, what's going on here is we're taking t, and it, t, you multiply it by something from R2, and it gives you a vector in R3. So we're trying to figure out what is this x, y, and z? What do they have to um, what do they have to satisfy in order to be the range? So we're just taking this and we're going to write it as an augmented matrix. You know, this would be like the A column and B column here. So you get four or negative four, four x, two, five, y, negative thirty, negative five, z. So what we've got to do is solve this thing. Now notice when you solve this, if you were to put this into reduced row echelon form, what's going to happen here is since we've only got two uh, variable columns, then um, we could get a leading one in one of them and a leading one in the other, but we've got to have at least one row of all zeros. I mean, it's possible you could just only have one leading one, but that's not what's going to happen here. We're going to get something like this, and then this right here is going to give us an equation. This over here is going to have something with x, y, and z in it, and this equation is going to tell us the plane that this um, the the, uh, the plane that is the range of this linear transformation, because this takes in something from a plane and it spits out a um, it spits out vectors in R three, but it doesn't give you all of R three. It only gives you a plane. Now, unfortunately, when we do this reduced row echelon form, we uh, we can't use octave or a calculator to do it because we've got these variables here. Now there are some tools that will um, let you do this. I want to say a TI-89 can do it and I want to say Maple and some other things, but we're just going to do it by hand because it's, it's really not going to be that bad. On this one, let's see, I'm going to do row one divided by negative one and I'm going to do row two, I'm sorry, row three divided by five. So that's going to give me one, negative one. I'm sorry, not negative one, I'm divided by negative four. Negative one fourth x. And then uh, the next row I'm not gonna change, two, five, y. And then this one's going to become negative six, negative one, uh, one fifth z. All right, now let's use this as a pivot and zero out the two and the six. So we're gonna do row two minus twice row one and row three plus six row one. All right, so row one doesn't change. Row two minus twice row one, so it's two minus two, then five plus two then let's see, row two has a y minus twice row one, so that's gonna be minus two times negative one fourth x. So it's gonna be plus one half x. And then the bottom row becomes negative six plus six, negative one plus five times that it gives you uh, negative one or I'm sorry, minus six times that, gives you negative seven. And then this other piece over here is going to be negative, or no, it's gonna be one-fifth z plus six times negative one-fourth x. So that's one-fifth z plus, or no, minus uh, three-halves x. You know, this is fortunate. We've got the um, we've got a seven here and a se negative seven there. So my next operation is just going to be row three plus row two. And I'm not even going to write the rest of the matrix. 
When you do row three plus row two, you get zero, zero, and then let's see. I'm gonna do this uh, in order, x, y, z. So you add these together, you get minus x, you get uh, plus y, and then you get plus one fifth z. And then the other stuff up here, which I'm not even gonna recopy. This is the equation that we want. This equation, if you rewrite it, says zero equals minus x plus y plus one fifth z. And that's the answer. Now, if you entered that into my open math, it would take it no problem. It's not exactly the same as the answer that they gave up here. But if you take this and multiply it by 5, that's just going to clear out the fraction. You get minus 5x plus 5y plus z. And that's, uh, that's exactly what they have up there. Different order, but the order doesn't matter, of course. You put either one of these two things here into uh, my open math, Either one of these is perfectly good as your answer. And uh, notice, this is the equation of a plane in R3. This is the plane that, uh, that this matrix maps R2 onto.